In the last lesson, we saw how we can use variables to store information. In this lesson, we're going to look at how we can make use of those variables to control things moving around on the screen. So if we go back into Tick 80, we're going to develop the program from lesson one. So let's make sure that that's loaded into our system. If we want to find out what programs we've got available, we use the command ls, which gives us a directory listing. And there we can see that our lesson1.tick file is ready to use. So let's load that in. And if we now press the escape key, we should have that code all ready for us to modify. We'll do a quick cleanup of the code to get it ready for our lesson two content. So let's change our title here to two and our description. It's still gonna be programmed in Lua. We're gonna get rid of this counting bit. And then we're going to just clean out our tick function so we have a nice clean uh, bit of software. Now, once we've edited that, it's important now to go back and save this as our lesson two so that we don't then overwrite our lesson one code. So let's press the escape key and we can now save this as lesson two. And if we do our uh, directory listing, we can see we now have lesson one and lesson two. And if I press escape to go back to the code editor, we're now editing our lesson two code. The program we're going to write for this lesson is going to bounce some text around the screen. So let's start by getting that text on the screen in a fixed position. So we've already got our X variable and our Y variable, and we know that we can use those to set the position where we print some text. So again, let's start those off in the top left-hand corner by setting the coordinates to zero and zero. We know our function tick runs 60 times every second and that the first line in that should be to clear the screen so that we can now have a blank display to put our new text in there. So same as last time we saw we used the print command. But this time we're going to get it to stick a couple of bits of text together. So we're going to get it to show us the coordinates it's currently printing the text at. So if we get it to print the x value, we can then use two full stops. And in Lua, this is how we join bits of text together. Uh, joining bits of text together is called concatenation in, in programming. So we're going to concatenate two little bits of text together. Um, and actually sometimes text is called a string. So we're gonna concatenate two strings together. And what we're going to put in between that then is a little hyphen. So we need to use inverted commas to tell the computer that this bit inside the inverted commas is the text we want to use. We then are going to join another bit of text on the end and that's going to be our Y variable. Then we put a comma and we know that after the text we're going to print, we then put the coordinates. So that's going to be at X and Y. So let's come down here and make it rid of some of these blank lines. So we have our little program is going to start off by specifying our coordinates in the top left hand corner. It's going to clear the screen and then it's going to print this little text was going to be the X coordinate hyphen the Y coordinate at the actual X and Y coordinates. So if we press escape and we run that, we've got our zero zero up in the top left hand corner. So again, escape to cancel out of that and escape to go back to our programming code. So what we need to do is we now need to get the software to automatically move that bit of text around the screen. We know that the X and Y coordinates here, or these variables, control where on the screen it's gonna be. So what we could do is we could start making X increase by one each time we go into this tick function. 
So let's see what that does. So if we come in here, we again, same as before, we say, make the variable x, assign it a new value of x plus one. So that should gradually make the text move across the screen. So let's see what that does. So escape and run. And there goes our text moving across the screen. And off it goes. What we've seen now is that this program at the moment will just keep on adding one to X and eventually push it right off the screen and it will just carry on going and X will gradually increase. So what we need to do is we need to have a way of getting the computer to figure out when it's time to stop that. Now, in our Tick80 screen, we have 240 pixels going across the screen. So zero at the left-hand edge and 239 at the right-hand edge. In our code then, this current line where we update X, that's where we want to do our test, just after that one. So if we come in here, the basic idea is that if X has gone off the edge of the screen, so in other words, if X has become greater than 240, then that's what we want to find out. So we can write that as code using what's known as an if statement. So if, we then have to put inside brackets and we do a test or an expression. So if X is greater than, and we now need to put in a value of X that we're gonna test for. So 240 is actually just off the right hand edge of the screen. So we're gonna do it so that we can still see at least one of the characters or one of the letters before it goes off the screen. So let's back it in by about eight pixels. So we're gonna say, so if X has become greater than 232, then we want to do something. So on our next line, we're gonna do something, and this is part of our if statement. And so because it's part of that statement, we need to indent it in again using our tab key. And the simplest thing we're gonna do is we're just gonna simply say, if X becomes greater than 232, then just make it equal to 232 so that it stays at that right-hand edge. So we'll do this assignment, so make X equal to 232. And that's the end of our if statement. So we have to say end. So let's see what this does then. So press escape and run that code. And we can see our text animating across the screen. And this time it stops when it gets to the right hand edge. So if we press the escape key again and back to our code. Our if statement then is correctly detecting when the variable x is pushing the text off the right hand edge of the screen. But at the moment then it's just holding it there, which isn't what we actually want to do. We, we want it to actually bounce back so that it heads back towards the left hand of the screen. So let's have a think at how we can do that. If we look at our code, this line where we update our value of X by adding one to it, that's what actually makes it move to the right hand edge of the screen. If we want it to move towards the left hand edge of the screen, we actually want to take away one like that. So we need to both detect when it hits the edge of the screen and then get it to reverse the motion. So this value here, we need to control that. And again, we're gonna do that using a variable. So let's come up here and create a new variable. And this variable is going to control the direction that we're moving in the X axis. So if we say, if we just call it X direction, and we're gonna start off with it being one. So we start off at the left hand edge by setting x equal to zero. And we then start adding our direction. And make sure that you get it typed in correctly. So 
our x direction starts off at 1. So when we get to this line here, we have x equal to x plus 1, which will move it over to the right-hand edge of the screen. But when we get to our if statement then, we've hit the edge of the screen, and this is where we now want to both stop x at 232, but also start sending it back the other way. So we can simply do that by changing the direction variable. And if we set that equal to minus 1, what will happen is the next time we come into this function, x direction is now minus 1. So we'll have x equal to x minus 1, which will start moving it back towards the left-hand edge. So let's give this a try and see what happens. So again, run our code. Starts off moving to the right, hits the right-hand edge, and bounces back to the left. Of course, it's now going off the left-hand edge of the screen. So let's come back into our code. This if statement tests for x pushing it off the right-hand edge. So we now need to have a similar test to check for the left-hand edge. So this time, if x is less than zero, then we want to make x equal to zero. And we want to change our direction to send it back over to the right. And that's the end of our if statement. So if x has pushed it off the edge at the left, so x less than zero, then set x equal to zero and change the direction back to plus one, which heads it back over to the right again. So let's test that out and see if that works. So over to the right hand edge, bounces off, back over to the left hand edge and bounces off. And this will now just sit there going backwards and forwards, bouncing off each edge. So back into our code. Okay, so that's our x direction taken care of. But we want to, to also bounce up and down the screen. We know that our up and down position is controlled by our y variable. So this one here. So y equal to zero is the very top of the screen. And the very bottom pixel then is at 136. So 136 is just off the bottom of the screen. So we want to do something very similar to what we're doing with our x value, where we have to set a y direction. We need to update our y variable using the direction. And we then want to test for going off the bottom of the screen and get it to bounce, and going off the top of the screen and getting it to bounce. So why don't you have a go at this yourself, pause the video, and then we'll see how you get on. If you've managed to get it to work, that's great. If not, don't worry, we're going to go through it together now. So we know that the up and down position of our text is controlled by this y variable, with 0 being at the top of the screen and 136 being at the bottom. So we know that we're going to mimic what we're doing with the x part of our code. So we're going to need a y direction. And for this, 1 or, or plus 1 is going to take us down the screen, minus 1 is going to take us up the screen. So we're going to start off at the top and set the direction to be down. After we update our x variable, we need to update our y variable. So we're simply going to add on this y direction value again. So at the moment, we're starting at 0, and each time we're adding on 1, which will take us down the screen, when we hit the bottom of the screen, we're going to change the direction to minus 1 and take it back up the screen. So we've got our check here for our x edges. 
we now want to check for our y edges. So again, if y is greater than, remember 136 was the very bottom of the screen, so that will take it actually off the screen. So we're going to back it in by 8. So if y is greater than 128, then we do something about that. So we're going to fix y at 128, and we're going to change the y direction to minus 1, which is going to send it back up the screen again. And that's the end of our if statement. So that, ha that controls then the bottom edge detection. And let's do the top edge. So if y is less than 0, so it's gone off the top of the um, screen, then we're going to limit y again, so y equal to 0, and we're going to change the y direction to set it going back down the screen again. And that's the end of our if statement. So we start off at the top of the screen, set the starting direction to be down, we update our y variable to, to keep it going moving. We then do a check to see if we've gone off the bottom of the screen. If we have, we then set the direction to be up, which is minus one. We then check for the bottom, the top of the screen. If we get that, we then set the direction to be down. So let's run that. And there we have our text bouncing around the screen. That's our bouncing text program finished now. So let's make sure that we save our work. So if I escape back out to the console, because we already saved the program at the start and gave it a name of lesson two, we can just simply say save, and this will save it over the top of our current work. So that's everything ready then. In our next lesson, we're going to look at how we can use the buttons on the keyboard to control our motion. So I'll see you in the next lesson. Don't forget to visit the course pages for this project. There you'll be able to download the code for this lesson and get lots of extra hints and tips. You'll also get access to all my other programming, electronics and gaming projects. All the links are in the description below. For more games programming, electronics projects and retro gaming, please make sure you like this video, subscribe to my YouTube channel and visit my website.